The rank of Grand Admiral may conjure images of brilliant strategists like Thrawn, whose campaign against the New Republic represented one of the few real chances the Empire had of securing victory. But of the 13 individuals who held the rank under Palpatine, not all were quite as militarily oriented. Others, like Rufon Tejanus, were known for either political savvy, or if they lacked in savvy, they made up for it in zealotry like Ishnil Raz. Our subject for today is Grand Admiral Martio Batch, who avoided both the battlefield and the Imperial Court, instead leading Imperial research and development in secret projects despite his high-profile appointment to the Grand Admiral rank two years before the Battle of Yavin on New Year's Fet Week. Because of his absence from public life and the active military, Batch became known as the Invisible Grand Admiral, which was fitting given the nature of his secret research projects. Little is known about Batch's life before the creation of the Grand Admiral rank. Many of the Grand Admirals did have some background in the military, but this was not universal, so it's possible his entire background was in research and development, though he may also have had an active command. After the destruction of the Death Star, Palpatine appointed Batch to secretly begin development of a cloaking device. Cloaking technology was a tricky thing, and while it was an old technology in some ways, the most effective cloaking devices of the past had involved the use of Stygium crystals, like the one on Darth Maul's scimitar. An entire island on the planet Miramir was made of the crystals, making it invisible to scanners. But the primary source of Stygium in the galaxy were the mines of Aiton II and the Drighton Nebula. Unfortunately, these had largely been stripped clean. This lack of availability meant Batch's primary goal was finding an alternative to the Stygium-powered devices. But in the course of his research, he also published an article called What You Don't See on cloaking devices to the Imperial Handbook. In this article, he outlines for the rank and file how cloaks mask ships to scanners and even basic vision. He also mentions that several Imperial vessels are already outfitted with cloaking devices, but that their identities are classified. So even though Stygium was very rare, there was still at least some in use by the Empire. Batch's answer initially seemed like it may come in the form of Hybridium, a type of ore found on the planet of Garros. He was able to successfully develop a type of cloaking device with the new substance, but it was much worse than the Stygium one in a few ways. Unlike with Stygium, which allowed the ship to operate and communicate largely normally on its end, Hybridium cloaks were double blind. Other ships couldn't detect it, but it couldn't detect or communicate with them either. While these experimental devices would be used to great effect by Grand Admiral Thrawn with the cooperation of Joris Sabayoth using the Force to coordinate their forces, the result was not good enough for Batch, who had been working on his project for nearly three years so far and decided to choose violence. Batch was aware of a new superweapon being developed by the Death Star's designer, Bevel Emelisk, named the Tarkin. This was basically a battle platform with the main super laser of the Death Star and little else to it. Batch was able to use his rank to temporarily commandeer the platform, and return to where he knew there were Stygium crystal deposits to be found, Aiton II. With this new weapons platform, he blasted the planet and exposed previously inaccessible veins of Stygium, ironically using the weapons of terror as the mining platforms Imperial propaganda often claimed they were. The new source the new source could easily recreate the original cloaking device. With this massive new source of Stygium and the nearby belt of Ara being mined for fuel, the cloaking project became of critical importance to the Empire. Batch was able to requisition a new flagship, the Executor Class Terror, commanded by Admiral Sarn. The first major project was the creation of a new type of cloaking starfighter, the Thai Phantom. But the Imdar Alpha facility, and even the Terror itself, were outfitted with the new cloaking devices. Production delays drew the attention of Darth Vader, who personally went to the research facility to oversee production until he had an entire fleet of the new TIE Phantoms. The Rebellion soon became aware of the research facility, and in a Rebel Strike 2 they engaged in a series of operations to steal the tech and shut down the project. The Rebel team was successful in not just stealing a Phantom, but they also managed to destroy every single other one, along with the fuel mines in the Belt of Ara, Imdar Alpha itself, and the Super Star Destroyer Terror. Admiral Sarn was executed by Vader for his failures in stopping the Rebel attack, and knowing he would face a similar fate himself, Martio Batch absconded to the Outer Rim with his remaining ships. 
The deaths of Vader and the Emperor the next year provided an opportunity for his forces to rejoin the Empire. So when the chance arose, they mutinied killing Batch and returned to join Imperial Warlord Blitzer Harst's forces. That's going to do it for our latest Grand Admiral profile. If you've enjoyed, consider leaving a like or subscribing for more. If there's anything you'd like to see me cover on the channel, please leave it in the comments here, or on the Discord Suggestions channel linked in the description. If you'd like to see some shorter form but more regular content, you can also check out the Clips channel I recently started, which is also linked in the description and in the cards, where I put out newly daily lore or news clips covering topics in a minute or less. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.